And it very much gave like, oh, hi, Carrie, this is my wife, Natasha, to me. Like, Welcome to Black Bi Reality, a place for Black Bi baddies and those who love us. I'm Nicole Weaver, and I'm here to talk about season two, episode two of And Just Like That. And once again, I am here with my co-host for this series, Aramide Tanubu, a fabulous film critic and lover of the original show. Hi. Hello. <laughs> And we're back. And we're back. Um, yeah. What are, are your quick thoughts, overall thoughts on this episode? It was unhinged and I in the all the best ways. I agree. I agree. Um, I think it further addressed more more concerns or like feedback people had about the first season. They they heard y'all mm-hmm. and are are making some changes. And I, I'm feeling it, but I'm also stressed out by some of these storylines with our Black characters. But we'll get into it. Um, we are going to do this recap. Of course, it's going to be full spoilers. So if you haven't watched it, hit Hello. pause. Hit pause. Watch it. Come back. Uh, we are going to go this in depth because we... I don't know about you, but I have some Virgo placements. We like we like to be thorough. So we start off. Carrie is recording at her podcast. Everything's going fine with these with these ads, honey, until we get one about um, vaginal dryness, and she immediately says no. I thought this was in line with her character because although <laughs> Carrie had a sex column, Carrie was a prude. Most of the time, y'all. I 100% agree. Like, she, first of all, she was barely able to pull the podcast together in season one. I thought it was in line with her character, but I wish it was a little, something a little bit more outlandish. Like, I don't know, like a butt plug or something. Like, I don't even know if that (laughs) would have been it. But she was, like, cringing over, like, a vaginal suppository, which I get if you don't use that, you don't believe in that. But I just felt like... Girl, like, get your money, but I also, like, love money, so perhaps <laughs> I've bought too much into capitalism. We know Carrie is a terrible capitalist, yes. okay? Um, money money is, is fictional in her mind, and she just got real... I won't say she got real lucky. She put in work to bag big mm-hmm. <laughs> and get his yeah. bag. <laughs> for 10 years of her whole life. Yeah, that's her kind of capitalism. But um, work, work, no. Um, so yeah, that that was a very interesting glimpse. We then see Seema walking to the hairdresser. She's so excited to Kiki with her hairdresser. Um, she says she's done with Zed. He's living with his ex. Goodbye. And this hairdresser ends up yelling on the top of his lungs, this is why you're alone. And Seema quickly collected her purse and marched her ass right up out of there, even though that man had been giving her her blowouts for a decade. Because it was just, like, so rude. And it's how people treat single people as if they have some type of disease and they're not supposed to have any standards or any sort of sense of what they want. Um, And I don't think the man meant it that way, but it was, like, very... It was very hurtful, actually. Like, I felt Mm -hmm. really bad for her because Mm -hmm. everybody in the salon was looking like, ooh, like. Yeah, yeah. As a hairstylist, you can be in my business if I give it to you, but don't don't get the whole salon into it. Um, So, yeah, that was ridiculous. One thing Seema's going to do is pack her bag and go. Mm -hmm. And I was I was for it. Agree. I'm always for her. She's like my I live for her. She's iconic. Yeah, haven't seen her do a wrong move yet. We'll, we'll keep talking about this red flag conversation. Next, Miranda is going down on Che. It's broad daylight. I love, I love that most of her sex scenes are happening, like not at nighttime, but it's obviously because Che works at night. It makes sense. I mean, that's sense. true too, but sometimes you got to get it in in the day. Like I'm someone who loves sleep. So, you know, catch me in the middle afternoon personally. Yeah. Like, cool. Yeah. But I'm gonna read my book and go to bed at night. I love that too. I love that too. Um, then Che gets a call from BD. The network doesn't like the script, so they need to get back to work. Miranda is 
I don't care about your job. I don't care. I'm, I'm in my zone right now. So we're going to just continue. Uh, at the end, basically, Che says, I got to go to work. Um, and we once again know that Tony Danza is playing their father. Tony Danza is an Italian man and I'm, I was so amused when I saw he actually appears in this episode because the last time I saw him he was on Raising Canaan one of the power book Ooh. 12s or whatever and he's playing an Italian gangster because he's an Italian man like Che is not Italian which we'll get into that. <laughs> yes it, I, I remember the name drop in the first episode and I should have just known I would actually see this man mm -hmm. but I was still somehow surprised when we actually see him. Um, back to Carrie at work. Uh, she gets chewed out by her boss. Like, are you trying to get this money or not? Nah? And Carrie's like, look, I have hot vegan bags on Instagram, which is so interesting. Just, just going to say that. <laughs> She's like, I, I have done things that I have considered not me, which we know, like, that is kind of part of the advertising game. Uh, Carrie really should be doing, like, high upscale, like, mm -hmm. fashions that she loves. Um, so this is this little conflict where Franklin's acting like, you know what, I'll just talk to her. It'll be all good. Franklin has a lot of patience because I would have been really irritated. Like, for it's one thing if you're like doing, and I get your brand is your brand, but this is not her personal Instagram. People depend on her and like ad revenue in mm -hmm. order to eat as well. So again, it's not like she was saying like, I don't know, like she was talking about endorsing a Republican candidate or some something outrageous. Like it was coochie products. Like you'll be okay, Sistrin. Like please, basically. Basically. It felt very like she took it way too personal. Like I, Franklin had the patience of a saint because I was getting very irritated with her personally. <laughs> yes, I I agree. Next, we see Lisa back at home. Um, she has flowers and cake with her little daughter, but we now know that the mother in law <laughs> is coming to town, and we have to quickly do this hair, y'all. Herbert is finally picking up some slack. He got one side of the baby's head. She got the other. Are the braids going to actually match? I don't know. But they were looking good. They were looking good. And, um, yeah, we hear from the little baby's mouth that grandma likes proper little lady hair. And then Eunice comes. And, okay, so Lisa is in a zebra print skirt, pencil skirt, and, like, a nice, a nice, uh, print but I can't tell you what kind and this woman makes the joke that she just came from the Sh Lion King show so okay let's back up so we see Lisa first of all as we talked about last episode Lisa has been running around like her head is caught up as most, as most working mothers do and, and even stay at home moms the baby has this gorgeous fro She's about eight or nine and she has like a bow or maybe like a couple of like mini braids in the front, but the rest is loose and glorious. They go zooming through the front door. Her, is his name Herbert? Is that the man's name? Mm -hmm. Herbert is standing there and he, like, like you said, Nicole, he picks up the slack. But they just do two like plaits, like the type of plaits where your mom don't have time and puts two barrettes on the end of them. So it, it's very much like I'm in a rush hair, but I just can't imagine like Lisa and Herbert have probably been together for two decades. I cannot imagine indulging this lady like this. Like, I don't, she's gonna be slick and come up out the mouth anyway, but I'm not about to like be combing a comb through my baby's hair at the last minute to try to like subdue or put on a show for this woman. And I, I don't have a mother in law, um, but my boyfriend's mother is very kind. I just can't imagine jumping through all these. Like, it's just, it seems so outlandish in my opinion. I I personally also would not go to these lengths, but I think what we see later with Lisa and Herbert's private conversation after once again talking to his mama, she does kind of align with his mom on some things. Mm -hmm. So it kind of does not surprise me anymore 
that yeah she's she's really going above and beyond even the the mother-in-law left her bag at the door and her son did not take that bag it was on her Mm -hmm. to take the bag inside (laughs) and that's i think unfortunately that's the trap that a lot of women get into like trying to be perfect trying to create this perfect life and that's why you end up crashing and burning because no one can do it all Mm -hmm. and i don't know it was just it was we'll get into more of what happens with that but like I thought that whole montage with the baby and I'm sure that women do this all the time was just crazy but at Mm -hmm. some point you have to put your foot down and it's like I'm not about to be like changing my baby's hairstyle because you don't you are not pleased with it it wasn't like she was taking her to tea the baby to tea or taking her somewhere they were sitting in the house having some cake and dinner you lucky I didn't pop a bonnet on her head. Because, you know, kids want to roll around mm-hmm. and be on the floor and do all type of stuff. You'll be all right, grandmother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Respectfully. Yes, respectfully. That's my thing. It's like a lot of people are like, respect your elders. Um, yeah. But you still can have a backbone once it's yeah. your family and your life. <sighs> Anyways, next. We see Lily ask for an electric keyboard. She's taking her art to a different direction. And she is songwriting. Rock at first is like, please nah. I'm not (laughs) trying to hear this all day. And the parents, Charlotte and Harry, are just like, you figure it out. And um, yeah, that's, that's where we leave off there. I appreciated them telling her, like, it, we have a Yamaha, whatever the grand. No, no, no. It was not child. a Yamaha. You <laughs> know it wasn't a Yamaha. <laughs> well, whatever they bougie <laughs> regular piano is, they're like, sister, we have one of those. If you want to get this electric piano, get it yourself. If you want something, go out and get it. You're, she's like 16. She's old enough to figure it out. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was important. I was very proud of Charlotte for doing that, actually. Same, same. Uh. Next, Naya and Andre talk on the phone about their call. He admits that something, maybe he wants something to happen with Heidi, who looks like, once again, regular degular girl at uh, Coachella. But he mostly wants things to work out with Naya. Uh, And he suggests then that they use a surrogate. For a baby and Naya immediately hangs up. And she should have. Because first of all, first of all, why are we calling this man by his two first names? Under she that, loves that, y'all. <laughs> doing that to him. Like, please, like call him Dre or Rasha or uh, like there's three options. Choose one. That's yeah. one. Two, like I just couldn't believe the audacity of this MF. Like you talking about you want to slide into Taylor Swift, but you want me to go and fetch a surrogate, which is super expensive. She's already said, like, oh, look, I'm not really sure about motherhood. We've tried to get pregnant. It's not working, you know, naturally. And he also is not even there. Like, he's off on tour. He didn't wait to come home to have this conversation. They're, he's not even, they're not even having good communication right now. So no. to, like, blurt this out, like, I wanted to slap him. It was so disgusting. It was so self-serving, so, like, selfish, I thought. And I would have hung up on his ass, too, so... Mm-hmm. And what about it? Agreed. I can't believe he actually said, "Well, maybe I want something to happen." And last night, or in that call, you were acting like she was crazy. You literally called her crazy, and that, oh my gosh, we're not having sex. Blah blah. blah. It's like, but you might be thinking about it. So exactly. Like also, why are you working with her in your hotel room? That's a studio other for. Or workspaces, we work hotel yeah. lobbies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. No boundaries. It's ridiculous. Next, Miranda goes to an AA meeting, which honestly I forgot about this storyline. <laughs> I thought Miranda had some alcohol um, dependency struggles. I was so confused. I was like, why sister like in this? But I also thought, not to trivialize it, that it was because she was struggling with her sexuality and her feelings for Che and like what to do Mm. do with Steve so I didn't know that she actually I shouldn't say that she actually had a problem I just didn't I forgot about it because it seemed to taper off at the end of last season right right I don't know I I 
we kind of saw a similar storyline on Grey's Anatomy, or we heard that from a specific character, uh, Amelia Shepard. She said, you know, not Amelia. She's always been an addict, but she talked to Kate Walsh's character and she let her know, you know, during COVID, basically I coped with drinking. Mm. And I think that might be the reality for a lot of people. And obviously we see Miranda did make huge life changes Mm -hmm. after COVID. We know that she was disillusioned with law during COVID and like left her whole career, um, which is a big deal because she built so much of her identity around that, um, that I think it might be a lingering like COVID after effect, but that's just a theory. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So she meets homegirl Allie, who has all these tattoos, says she hasn't seen virgin arms like Miranda's in a minute. And it's like, (sighs) okay, girl, if you, if you say so. And she offers her to kind of go and volunteer at the beach and pick up some, some trash to have something to do because once again Miranda's not working no and she does need to work her steps so I thought that was like a good thing for her to do instead of pining after Shay Shay, and laying around waiting for them to get home every day yeah yeah I did kind of wonder like oh is this is this another love interest what are we doing here but Ali did name drop that she's married to a man um but you don't know you never, never know. know. So I'm keeping an eye on you, Allie. Next, uh, Seema and Carrie talk at a bar about the whole hairstylist debacle. And Carrie was like, I don't know if you're really booking it too soon, but, you know, it's something to think about. So she's questioning, Seema is questioning a little bit about her uh, her strategy. And yeah, what did you think of this? I actually really liked Carrie's advice because I've really become the friend who tries not to tell people what I think. And Carrie's like, you know, if you think that you're someone who immediately jumps when you see the first side of something you don't like, then maybe you should adjust. And I think that was an important thing to do. Like, I don't think that Seema should like run back to this man with open arms because he did lie through omission like who in their right mind would be think it's appropriate for you to still be living with your ex-wife um so but I do think what Carrie said is sound she's like you know if you you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results like that doesn't make sense so maybe just go back to the drawing board and make sure that you have exhausted all of your options make sure this is really something you want to do you know it's iconic to watch a sickening woman like Seema get up and march herself you know out of a room but making sure that you're leaving for the right reasons, I think is always important too. True. True. I still think Seema's in the right, but I did like Carrie's advice as well. Lily records music in her bedroom. She got the new keyboard and Charlotte is like, where did we get this? Turns out the real deal came in, and picked up all of Lily's very expensive stuff. Uh, we do see the closet. It. <laughs> what did they leave? Okay. And <laughs> one thing that they did leave, which was a nice callback to the movie, is that little cupcake purse that Lily put. Uh, whose cell phone was it? It was was it Carrie's cell phone? Carrie's cell yeah. phone in and led to that whole whole dress debacle. Had Sex in the City fans. Beefing with a baby. <laughs> My thing was with this. So first of all, I'm actually glad that she thought of this because I did thought she had stole her mom or dad's credit card. Like, I don't know why I went to that like ridiculous um, like insinuation. But also like she wasn't very smart because she wears couture. And I get it, you're 16. Like you don't really know what's going on. But how much could the freaking computer, the the keyboard cost a thousand dollars? I don't know anything about musical instruments. But it couldn't have cost, you know, a Chanel garment or more than one of them. So I just thought, like, first of all, why are you letting these people in your home? Like, let's be safe here, children. Um, Second of all, a piece or two, maybe three pieces. Maybe, I don't know, talk to your mother about it. Um, So I appreciated her thinking outside the box. 
but all she has is one pair of panties and a t-shirt and that cupcake purse left. So what you gonna wear to school, ma'am? And she just, even just the thought of, okay, she sells this. She got ripped off. So bad. <laughs> like she didn't have nothing. Nothing no. in that closet. None of her fashions. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So Charlotte vents about this at a nice little lunch with Anthony and Lisa. Uh, she's most specifically upset that a Chanel dress for Lily is, is just out there now. And this is like a sentimental piece, but also Lisa's like, yeah, that might have been one of like Karl Lagerfeld's like last designs. That thing, that thing is going to only appreciate and value. Um, I did notice though, Lisa orders a stronger drink mm -hmm. and mentions that her mother-in-law is in town with her sorority sisters, which at that point I was guessing. And That's I knew what it was gonna be. I knew it too. My thing is, do they have to sign off on this? Because would you sign off on this kind of character being in your sorority? Did they say the sorority, or just they, they, they never just, said they it, just wore the color? See, I think they had that issue with insecure because um, Molly's also was also an AK on insecure, and I think that she actually wore the letters. Um, and I think they did did not so whatever happened. It was some drama with the AKs and they didn't like it. But um, they, these are also some AKs of a certain age. And Yes. Yes. But it could have been any of the, you know, Divine Nine sororities of I mean, a certain age. You know, they live for their respectability politics. And that's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, but <laughs> no one says anything to Lisa's <laughs> comment about her mother in law. Charlotte just immediately goes back to her drama. And I was ready for Lisa to like pop one of the girl. But no, she is so supportive of Charlotte and this dress. I want Le I think Lisa is going to come apart at the seams. First of all, where are Lisa's black friends? Um that's first and foremost. But yeah. we I think we met last season when Charlotte and Harry went to her house. Didn't she have more like people of color there? Absolutely. I feel like you know, we need to see more of Lisa's black friends or a sister or somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, but this might all lead up to her having like a mental breakdown or some type of explosion as we proceed into um into the the season because Charlotte was very self-centered and Anthony was just kind of being Anthony and talking about like this new man he needs to hire for his bread organization. Yo, um, it's such a it's such a silly joke, but them giving him this business and being able to slip in this joke all the time of like, yeah, my one dude got hepatitis, so I'm looking for a new hot guy. It's so good. It's like A plus. A plus. Yes. Herbert tries to catch a cat. He got his daughter there and his daughter's little white friend. They're about to go to a dance uh, class, I believe. And these cats are passing by. A uh, little girl said, this doesn't happen when I'm with my friend's family, which is like, oh, girl, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing right now? And he's frustrated. He finally, like, one cat stopped probably for the light. He says to him, like, this is illegal, which it is. Mm -hmm. And he gets frustrated because this man is doing the classic New York, I don't see you. You do not exist. And he bangs on the hood. <laughs> Mama, Grandmama comes around the corner. In her one lady green. Like, mm -hmm. And one lady is like, isn't that your Herbert? And she said, no. She flat out denied her son. And she said, let's go down third avenue. <laughs> and our, our, her little grandbaby is like, grandma. And she just kept walking. Me I have so many thoughts. I have so many. So first of all, I thought that, first of all, we've seen this whole scene before, and I think it was on um, This Is Us, Sterling K. Brown's character, mm -hmm. had the same situation happen. My issue with it is Lisa and Herbert live in a luxury doorman building. This is what I thought. If you live in New York, doorman get the cabs for you. Literally their job. Or they would be some people, they, they're the type of people with the money they have that would A, have a driver or at least he would have ordered an Uber Black. Like, 
there's so many other scenarios. I felt like this was very forced. Like I wish that there was another another way they could have shown how he experienced racism. And I'm not saying that like cabs aren't racist. Like that's basically why no one rides them anymore. And we all use Ubers here in New York. Mm -hmm. But I just felt like it was such a, it was very, it's a very late storyline in that way. Yeah, they went out of their way to have this black man Um, be discriminated against Mm -hmm. when he has certain privileges like let's let's face it that's kind of the point and it's kind of frustrating to me like I'm all for talking about um what these black characters like discrimination that they would face but knowing the tax bracket that they're in and and the lives that they lead make it in that inner circle Mm -hmm. it's gonna be different (laughs) I wish that yeah go ahead I'm sorry no 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 and like yeah I I kind of hate this because they don't go out of their way to make the white characters face things that they wouldn't face Mm -hmm. because of the tax bracket they're in It, it would just not make any sense but I feel like they're doing that with the black characters and it's kind of like just a rem- reminder they're black these are negroes like- uh it would have been different if he wasn't in front of his home if he had mm-hmm. on like maybe workout gear and was by himself and not with the babies like it would have been different if he like paid a tab somewhere had taken them to tea and the wait this ha- literally happened to me in Miami a few months ago I paid my tab left a restaurant and the like host went after me and accused me of not paying like something like that mm. versus like you live in a, go- go- a dormant building on Park Avenue in Manhattan there's no way that this is and those cabbies like not that he would know a cabbie but it just it didn't make sense because all he had to do was like step back and act like the doorman to hell a cab for him yeah it, it came to that yeah. So it just felt so forced and like someone who doesn't live in New York or know anything about that. Yeah. It, there was other ways for him to experience if you want to talk about racism, which is important, there's other ways for that to happen or have them to, to showcase that. And then for his mama to like, I like that she ain't know him from Adam was just truly deranged. Deranged. Like, Herbert, are you okay? Do you have family, you have family trauma you want to talk about? Because we could, I think Herbert needs a therapist. Yes, real that, bad. That's real wild. He, wow. Um, next, Carrie and Franklin are at home. They just, they just did the deed. And he opens his laptop to download Final Script, which this is... You don't have to download Final Strip no, script. I put on a page document. <laughs> like, come on. But anyways, um, he says they should be working on this vagina commercial. Carrie's like this is the last thing I want to do, which is so understandable. This is the point where you almost kick out Franklin out of your bed and out of your apartment. I agree. I mean, I understood. I think he should have just like wrote it for her or leveled her and be like, listen. You need to say this or we're all going to be out here on the street. It's essentially what he should have said to her, but he tried to pass by her. She just was like him and hot. Like I was annoyed with this entire scene. Like, ma'am, talk about these coochie pills and move on with your day. Like move on with, like you're not talking about being like pro-life or something like outrageous that you don't believe in. It is a pill for your puss. You will be fine. Yes. He can't write it for her because how he was already spitballing, she was not having any of it. Mm-hmm. She is a writer herself. She can write herself, which later on she does sit herself at that desk, opens that laptop. I love it. This is, I'm, I'm a writer. Mm-hmm. Like Carrie is one of those, those inspo people. Um, so it felt very nice to see that. But this was ridiculous. Yes. Then Charlotte, Harry, and Anthony hang out for dinner. Charlotte is watching the bids on this little dress or maybe just checking it out. And once again, just venting, angry. 
Rock interrupts and says, Lily has a performance for y'all. We're going to go in the next room. First of all, this gives much younger than what Lily is. Yeah, she's like 16. <laughs> she would never come out of her room. Yeah. Also, why are the Rock still sharing a room? Is their apartment not big enough for them to have their own room? Maybe, Maybe honestly. It's not. Yeah, they might, they might be true. Yeah. So they, they go. They hear this song. The song is about privilege, being stuck, being a good girl, and, you know, Park Avenue. And Charlotte looks heartbroken, unsure, confused. Um, She's like, these are all the things I love Mm -hmm. personally, so I don't know what your problem is. And this reminded me of a really bad poem I did write during my, like, emo phase. But I called it pedestal. And I was like, I hate that, like, my mom puts me on this pedestal and expects all these things from me. And so it felt real. I was like, Lily, I know exactly where you're at. Um, But this is wild, honey, to, to perform this in front of your parents. At your big age. I thought it was ridiculous like it'd been different if charlotte stumbled around into her room and saw her performing this or something like that or heard it um so i thought they got that all wrong like someone like a six-year-old would do this not a 16 year old yes i appreciated the emo is like that whole like and as a firstborn daughter we're both first firstborn daughters you understand that like it's stressful it's a stressful <laughs> situation to be in so i definitely felt lily um and I was also ready for Charlotte to get a job because if she kept scrolling on that damn iPad one more time, like, ma'am, you need, where's a root Richard Burton? You need to find something to do. I know. Because, I know. yes, but I understood, like, I understood, I understood, like, her anguish and saying, like, like, you know, you don't ever want to think that your kid is in pain or you've done something wrong. And I do think Charlotte's a really good mother. Yeah. Um, so I understood, like, she was just, she was, she was a little heartbroken by it, but the way that they presented this song was like very ridiculous and Anthony's face the whole time <laughs> gave me everything. Truly, <laughs> truly yeah. Anthony being the gay uncle is just yeah. saying kind of like girl. But that's the thing. I feel like if Anthony didn't like it or like said something like Lily, I don't know. I feel like the expectations would be just, she would crumble. <laughs> she would crumble. And he still made that Billy Eilish joke right in front of her face. Wild. Um, I And This should have led to a conversation, but Charlotte apparently just, we don't see that. Well, the thing about Charlotte, remember season one, they caught her um, giving Harry head and she like refused to discuss it. Like she could barely deal. Um, That's her. That's very much her MO of like, oh, like I'm a a Park Avenue princess. Like we don't Mm -hmm. talk about anything. And she's gotten better. But this is definitely her jam, like where she just like bubbles her emotions down, like everything she put, and she puts on like a a pretty hat or a pretty bag, and everything is perfect. So that's how she makes the life. That's true. That's true. And yeah, it feels real um, for this kind of dynamic. But yeah, this is this is a time where you need to talk to your daughter and honestly your adopted asian daughter about what the heck she's going through because no matter what even if it's like a good adoption um there's trauma there so yeah and they have rock and don't they have rock in therapy they didn't go to therapy with rock when when rock came out i don't know all of them need to go down to the therapy because harry needs to figure out why he don't have no friends Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Herbert's mom dresses him down back at home and for losing his temper. She likens him to a squeegee man on the street. And then at the very end, she looks at Lisa and she said, didn't we get freed from head wraps from through the emancipation? proclamation and this is hun- homegirl is it a wig or is this silk press either way you're not gonna have me believe that she does not wrap her hair before going to bed that's that's the thing she bursts into their bedroom at night lisa has on a nightgown and a beautiful like i'm sure like chanel louis vuitton like 
Gucci silk scarf wrapped around her head in a still beautiful way. Like it's not the big raggedy bonnet that I pop on my head every night. Mm -hmm. And like, it was just, it was, it felt very realistic of like these aunties who are very much like bathing in respectability politics, but it's like, ma'am, this is respectability politics won't save you. It won't keep you alive. It won't stop racism from getting you. It won't get you a husband, a nice, none of it. And I, I need y'all to let it go and let it breathe. And it wasn't like she was coming to her son and be like, hey, like Herbert, is everything okay? Like I saw that you were very angry, blah, blah, blah. And I just feel like, I also, yeah. it was so strange because Lisa also like kind of co-signed what her yes. mother was saying. Yes, and I, I get, was shocked. I, I was shocked. Was, and I, maybe it was because the babies were with him. That's why she was like, you know, you need to watch your temper in that way. But it was very strange. Like, no, it really. Oh, that was mind blowing to me that there was no. He knows he's a grown man. First mm -hmm. of all, he doesn't need to be talked to in this way. What you need to do as like the support system is just ask, like, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. How'd that feel? Like there was no space for that. It was all correction of behavior. Mm -hmm. And, and she doesn't know anything that happened prior to that. All she did was come around the corner. It doesn't matter. Seeing him like, you know, going off a little bit and ran her ass back down park the other way. The her message baby. we got is it never matters. And she she name drops a lot of things to show where this character is coming from. Um, her husband ha having to like wear a suit while being in Selma. And we know that history and we respect that history. But I would hope that some elders also can see that a lot of that work that was done was so the next generation would not have to, you know? And my thing is, even if you don't, like, I think you either have boomers who get it or don't, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. But I was, that was in line with her character, with Eunice's character to be like, get it the F together. But for Lisa to, to then sign, to then co-sign it was, this is why you're over here plaiting your baby's hair with the speed of light yes. because I would have just sat there and ate my food I'm about to be disrespectful you know to my husband's mother but then when she left I would have had a conversation with him like hey yes. like what happened is everything okay because I thought that's what she was doing at first because when Eunice first burst in Lisa is minding her own you know stunning business mm -hmm. this is just sitting there like hmm, observing so mm -hmm. it, it just really took me for a loop and kind of expanded my thoughts about the character a little bit once again, we see Che on stage, and Miranda's hanging out in the back of the room, like not even seated. I don't, I don't know what's going on. They just always have her bumbling, and, she, and like Cynthia Nixon is so good. It's she is so good at being awkward. So I get it, but I'm just like, girl, sit, sit on down somewhere. Uh, and Che brings Tony Danza himself onto the stage so we see him he's in this uh afterwards he comes out and he gets introduced to miranda he he's making sure the pronouns are correct calls miranda um che's special person which was cute i think all miranda wants is to be claimed so that that's a plus and they make plans to go have dinner the next day. Yeah, I had no issue with this scene at all, except for Tony's like long silver locks, which is very shocking to see. But yeah, I thought this was a fine scene. I was happy because I was nervous at first that he wouldn't know anything about Miranda or Che had said anything about her. Mm -hmm. So I was just glad that Che had been talking Miranda up and that, you know, her moving her life to LA hasn't totally been her just in her head or in vain yes totally carrie and franklin they're still working on this commercial which i'm like we need to move out of this yes immediately, um, please but then miranda calls carrie and that's when carrie goes into the bathroom and i honestly did not realize how nostalgic it would make me feel that carrie goes into the bathroom to talk to one of her girlfriends i was like oh mm -hmm. we did do this a lot and i i liked that that's when uh, Miranda has to hang up to talk to Tony Danza. 
after that, Seema, she goes, pops in to the hairstylist again. She has a really bad blowout. And she's just like, look, I took said back. Take me back. And the guy was like, why are you even stressing? I stay off the walls to mm-hmm. everybody. He's like, I told Honey Boo Boo to get a light belt. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> you should have gotten fired, sir. But that, like, this show painstakingly makes sure, like, everyone is, like, so much more, like, aware of things. But I also was like, this character is allowed to be problematic. And I was like, I kind of like it because it feels real. These yeah. people still exist. But I'm also like, you you should be fired. You should be fired. And she sat her butt down. She was like, good. I'm back home. I mean, I don't blame her at all because her hair looks a fool. Uh, Marina's cleaning up at the beach. I love how covered she is. Her skin is not meant for this Mm-mm. sun. But everyone also is covered. So everyone's being safe. Um, she, Dr. Naya calls her. She answers. And Dr. Naya is going off, y'all. She said, I am de this whole place. And was going off about the call that um, they just had. In the end, Miranda has to hang up. But I love this random character who is just staring her down and was just like, the earth is dead. We're cleaning up its corpse. <laughs> <laughs> that whole scene was so funny because Naya is literally having a wedding to exhale Angela Bassett moment, like trying to get this man stuff out her house. And Miranda's trying to like be a present friend, but also like very much not supposed to be on her electronics while cleaning the beach for AA. And then you have this man talking about like Uber is a Ponzi scheme. And it was just the way that he said it with no type of like inflection. Deadpan. It killed me. So, so I really, good. I really enjoyed this scene. Though I like going back to Naya and Lisa, I'm like, why why are these white women not listening to their black friends' problems? And I get it, Miranda literally was doing something, unlike Charlotte. Yes. But I noticed that. So yes, I hope that's it not too. a not a consistent thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone leaves the beach. Allie said she needs to run and get her kids from preschool. So Miranda, she's about to head out, but then she realizes she lost her phone, rightfully freaking out. Um, I thought the scene was all very Miranda. Like she, Cynthia Nixon is such like a physical actor. Uh, so I love her going through the bags, picking up a crowd and screaming. Uh, eventually, she gives up, finds a surfer, and is like, can I have your number? She knows Carrie's number. I And, like, Carrie had to change her number in the movie. I wonder if it's the same number. But that's just, like, me just being really silly. So she was like, I don't know. <laughs> She's numbers by heart. I don't know my partner's number by heart. Me neither. And we've both been with our partners, like, over three years at this yeah. point. <laughs> So yeah. I don't know his number by heart <laughs> at all. Like I, I don't even know which New York area code it is. Like it's real sad. I only yeah. I know two people's phone numbers. I used to know my mom and dad's, but they're gone from this world. But I know my sisters and my older cousin. That's it. That's good. And I know, and I know 911. Oh my I know my best friend's number because we almost have the exact same phone number. Ooh. Which is so strange. Yeah. That is strange and cool. Yeah, definitely at least memorize one or two, everyone, in case you get locked up. Like that's mm-hmm. the one, that's the one thing that you really need to know. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but yeah, so I she calls Che. Che's like, we got dinner in an hour, which not surprising. Um, and I thought okay let Che know you're not gonna be there or you're running Mm -hmm. late but why didn't we ask this young man to just get an uber or Che pay for Mm -hmm. an uber from where they're at to send like I was like we have too much good technology y'all I'm definitely like this past winter I was at Sundance Film Festival I left my phone somewhere and this guy from Walmart got me an Uber and it was so kind of him and I just gave him some cash because that's what I luckily had cash on me yeah. um so yeah she the guy should have just given her gotten her Uber but it's also 
kind of crazy because it doesn't look like she would have made the dinner anyway because she still needs to shower. She's been cleaning all day yeah. on the beach. She smelled. Yeah. Um, but Che's like, oh, well, I'll just send you someone. I'll send someone over there to get you because I can't make it to you in time and get to this Tony Danza uh, dinner. Still, it's Tony Danza. Like, rush back, scrub, and, like, hit there for a drink mm-hmm. or dessert. Not a dessert, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, so Carrie and Charlotte, they go to the real deal. This store clerk does not care, which why would she? She's probably she's, being paid minimum First of all, she's Gen Z. Like she gives Gen Z. I love, I love the Z. I love them. Yeah. They're everything to me. Like when I tell you that Sistrin is unbothered, she's scrolling through TikTok looking and, and Charlotte is becoming increasingly unhinged because the girl can't, she's like, I don't know where you think this is supposed to be at and charlotte is like borderline karen at this point she basically goes karen yeah <laughs> like she and yeah carrie though meanwhile as, as charlotte's doing the most carrie sees these boots and gets so excited and she asks the clerk a question and she's like I, I don't know and she just stops and she's like what and I was like we got our carry back I see a glimpse of her she is resuscitated she is breathing yes just getting seeing her excited about the, these boots and I was just like yes this is what we missed last episode with the Met Gala and why she would never this wouldn't have never happened because Sistrin is fashion yes like Please, like this. This is what Z is in. Like Z is trying to wear the fashions Carrie wore in the original Sex and the City. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to wear them too, but you know mm-hmm. I'm a little bit curvaceous. But no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So yeah, yeah, Carrie basically pulls Charles to the side and she's like, "Um, bring it down before you become a literal me. Yeah, let me get these shoes, and you need to let this shit go." And she tells her essentially, like, maybe it's that Lily doesn't reject you or hate you maybe she's just growing up Mm -hmm. and charlotte like it's kind of like a light bulb moment for her also as she realizes like lily probably can't fit the dress no way so yep but it's never about that like moms moms get so sentimental about the Mm -hmm. small clothes and they try to keep it as long and then they try to say well maybe it'll be for your kids or maybe it's that they don't want to let go of that like baby you and yeah but I also thought that this whole conversation was very meta about the show because yeah Carrie says Lily has outgrown the outfit anyway and she says that she might be fighting to save sex in the city which I haven't seen it I haven't seen you fighting to save sex in the city, but okay. But she said it might not fit her anymore. So it's like hint, hint Mm -hmm. audience a little bit. It's like, yeah, we're going to make these changes from season one because you dragged us to hell. But just letting you know, once again, this is not sex in the city. It's not sex in the city. (laughs) I appreciate it. I appreciate that. But I also reminded me that once again, like Charlie needs to have a conversation with her child if, at least to be like, hey, like these are nice pieces. Before you give them away, like you can make sure that they're not something that we could give to someone or preserve, or you can go shopping down to the TJ Maxx. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, next, Lyle picks up Miranda. I recognize this actor, but I don't know where from. Is that uh, Oliver Hudson? Is that Oliver Hudson, Kate Hudson's brother? I don't know if that was him. Yeah. That sure work. is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's why I have two degrees. Sure um, do. Wow. I I would have I know he's somebody. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this character is about to be around. Um, so yeah, he picks her up, he's a mixologist and the Soho house, and he casually drops that he is still married to Che. Mm-hmm. And that's this is the person that Che sent to go and get Miranda. And it very much gave like, oh, hi Carrie, this is my wife Natasha to me. Like it gave like I've been saying that this is like Che is is Miranda's big. And he, like they are. Because first of all, why would you send your husband, like your literal husband, because they have not been divorced, mm-hmm. to like I don't even know that Miranda knew that at any point Che was into men or like dated a man or any of this. 
Um, and it was just so shocking for I just felt terrible. (laughs) It just it just like the shock on Roger's face was like, and not only am I meeting your husband that you still married to. But which makes sense now because we, we talked about that Che is a, a bottom. Um, I'm funky <laughs> as hell and I look crazy. Like that would have pissed me off so bad. Likened her s- scent to oyster shucking. Um, yeah. This, okay, I'll do you, I'll do you my comparison because I actually was getting a lot of Grey's Anatomy from this episode. Mm. First of all, Franklin, when he was spitballing with Carrie about this ad, was like, how about the JJ? And Carrie says, oh, this is like not the 1990s weird phrasing. But the JJ came from Shonda Mm. in Grey's Anatomy. I think that's the first time it was ever said. And then with this whole storyline, it's also giving McDreamy and his wife, Kate Mm. Walsh, popping up in season one. And it's just like, hello, Meredith Gray. You've been sleeping with my husband. And it's like, what? Exactly. But that was so, so iconic. Oh, that was, that was an iconic moment in time. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to see what this little Lyle is up to and, and how that affects things. But, you know, Chase talking to Danza at the restaurant. He says, I can't be Mexican. I'm Italian. Duh. Yeah. I'm getting canceled almost on <laughs> social media. And he said, rightfully so. So let me be Italian and you can have, we're going to kill off the mom or scrap the mom. You're going to get a abuela. And she's like, but I'm Irish. And I'm Mexican. Yeah. Irish and Mexican. Um, once again, Che is realizing that this character is becoming farther from who they are as a person. And I, I actually like this storyline. I appreciate it because if you have creative friends or in that space, like you understand what you give up of your work to make things fit in a box in Hollywood. Because at the end of the day, you could create something, but it's really up to your producers, your studio, your network to give the green light. They're the ones with the money, with the check. So you do have to decide what it is that you're going to give up in order to get your product out there in order to eat. Um, and it's it's kind of like an um, a parallel thing to what Carrie's dealing with in a way, but I, that's why it, Carrie's sort of resistance to this JJ commercial it seems so trivial because this is literally Che's identity. That they- Sima and Zed are on a date, so because earlier I was like, Sima, did you actually take him back, or you just lied to this man? But she really took him back, which is wild. And then Zed immediately proposes. You are in the dog house, sir. What makes you think you can do this? But he proposes that they both invest $100,000 each into a club. And she said, Hell no, to the no, no. And that's my cue to leave. It's my cue to leave, because what are you talking about? And she tosses back a great death stare at him as she walks out. Che goes home to Miranda, who is looking bummed out, poolside. Uh, Miranda says that she feels she doesn't know them, like the whole not knowing um, the phone number was a sign, which is like, that's dramatic. Yeah, it's no one knows. I don't, I barely know my sister's phone But number. really, what sh- she should have been talking about is freaking Lyle, mm-hmm. uh, which Che kind of writes off as. We're just both lazy to divorce. I mean, my thing is, obviously, I think Miranda and Steve are still technically married. We haven't seen Steve or her of any actual divorce. So I don't think that Miranda could have been mad about that. I think it goes back to this, like, Che is a very withholding person. Sorry, they very much give big energy. Like, you withhold information and it makes their partner feel crazy because mm-hmm. it's like you didn't even like tell me. I didn't know who Lau was. It could have been your homie, your cousin. No, this is your husband. Mm-hmm. So I get why Miranda felt the way about it, but I also feel like they Carrie. I mean, Miranda's doing what Carrie used to do with Big, and it's like 
oh, I'll just take this little nugget of like, oh, we're just too lazy to go down to the whatever. If y'all both want to get divorced, that's not that hard. It's not like someone's contesting it. Um, yeah. And they obviously haven't been together in years. So it just felt like Miranda is back to taking scraps. But and another little tidbit that I was like, Che, Che is trying to talk Miranda down. And something they say is don't we're having fun mm. is what Che says. Don't let this be an existential crisis as a couple. And it's like, but that's the whole problem and the issue for Miranda is, are we just having fun or are we in this together? It's giving Alexander Petrovsky and when mm. Carrie followed him to Paris and then missed her like book party and all this stuff, following him around like a wet dog. Mm. Our Carrie and Franklin go to the studio to, you know, work. Then they find out, oh, there's no more work. <laughs> Everyone has things in boxes moving around. Their boss is like, this is all on you. Mm-hmm. Who knew? Who knew one ad could take down a whole company? But okay, apparently the company got bought out. Mm-hmm. Um, when they walk out, they're definitely in Condé Nast, right? Yes, definitely. This, That's it's a beautiful building. Yeah. Why aren't we? <laughs> oh, I don't know why. And maybe that's where they're gonna go. Maybe, hey, maybe. I, I would assume that because obviously this podcast was never aligned to what Carrie wanted to. Like she's good at the advice. I feel like she's giving really good sound advice, but this is not it. Like, yeah, it's just it's not even something that she or even Franklin have. They don't have their hearts in it. Obviously, no. No. And Franklin was also like, yeah, we're cutting off the sex because I am having feelings, which again, we're not, we didn't actually see any of that. Mm. (laughs) I don't think it gave anything but casual, like you said in the last episode, but he's telling us it is. So now he got to bounce. Which is fine. And I I really enjoyed that conversation. It was very mature. Like they embraced each other and you can see like, it's such a classic sex in the city moment. Carrie is like walking out. She looks stunning and like all fuchsia with a fuchsia like platform stilettos and like all these businessmen are like swarming around her. A couple of them look back as she exits, but it's like, she needs to go on to this new chapter. Like this was her widow chapter and it needs to come to a close. Um, and she needs to find something else, like seeing her excited about fashion again at the real deal and and all of those things like made me really, really happy. Um, and clearly, if you're fighting over coochie disp- dispositories, like you're just not in the <laughs> place that you need to be, no. like at all. No. Um, that's the episode. What do we have any any predictions based on what we saw? that's coming up or any questions that are lingering? Um, I still think they're setting it up for Naya and Lisa to like both have some massive breakdowns. They can get rid of Andre Rashad. I'm tired of him and his double name by uh, divorce immediately. Bye. Um, go Bring sleep with Taylor, mini Taylor Swift or whoever the fuck that you want to go with. Uh, Lisa, if this, this old lady don't get out of her house, Lisa gonna blow that thing up. Um, because it's just gonna come to to a, a head at some point. Just she's dealing with a lot, and mm-hmm. you can tell it's becoming very weighty on her shoulders. Mm-hmm. It's in terms of Miranda and Che. Like I don't see their relationship lasting. I think they're just like you said. Like Miranda's in her baby gay era, and Che doesn't have the emotional capacity, nor do they have the like the time creating Honestly. a show to deal with this which is fair and that's why at least you know at the end of the day big toe carry don't come with me to Paris like when they broke up for the second time and that's what Che should have told Miranda so that Miranda could figure things out for herself mm-hmm. um, Charlotte needs a storyline real bad or a job um, <laughs> and is that everyone yeah I'm just hopefully we get to see more of Carrie's fashion and Seema yes Sistrin your everything about you is perfect. I live. I need I need Sima to get a new man stat because yeah. I don't care for Zed. I don't want to go through this back and forth with Zed. I'm not shipping it. Give me give me someone new. Um, Carrie, I I hope she goes back to writing or doing something in fashion mm-hmm. or like something that bridges the two. Yeah. I just it would make the most sense. Go back to Vogue, baby girl. 
Um, I still want Miranda and Che to work, but I think this is going to be a long haul thing. I think you have convinced me that it's going to be a long haul thing. I think they're going to break up. I think Miranda's going to have another, maybe her version of Aiden. Mm -hmm. And then once Che is more established or this show doesn't even go through they go back to New York and yeah. like somehow reconnect. I need I need Miranda to go back to New York honestly. immediately. Okay, that is our recap of episode two. Um, you can follow me at Nikki Bernice on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. It's Nikki Bernice and then TikTok or Instagram. Uh, and most importantly, follow Black by Reality um Rami day where can people find you you can find me on the talk on the gram and on the blue bird app at yes. a word with a Rami day awesome. we hope to see you next week for the next episodes bye